So, as we were talking about social anxiety disorder, it's a very sort of uncomfortable um, syndrome that when it hits you, is it becomes very, very uncomfortable, very serious, and you can exhibit your, your traits and your, your talents out there, especially public speaking. So, in the part A, we were talking about, you know, the physical symptoms of um, blushing, sweating, and difficulty in speaking. So, individuals have a little bit of that when you are invited to go out there and speak, or when you are out there going to sort of have some sort of interaction with maybe a particular group of people. You have all these symptoms, but it's not, it's, it's not going to be overwhelming. It's going to be mild, blushing, sweating, you know, armpits and all that, and then difficulty in speaking. Sometimes your, your voice, your vocal box begins to shake. But then after a few seconds or minutes, it's normalized. You become okay, and then you continue with your activity. But then some of you out there can't handle this situation at all. It's overwhelming and therefore you can't even go on and do it. In that sense, please go and have it checked out. You can first of all book an appointment with your GP and then they will give you a referral to the psychologist or to the um, psychiatrist so that you will have some sort of support. And if it's very very clinical they will assess you for a period of time and then keep the evaluation going on and then if it needs some sort of medication or um, therapy you go through it and then you have your regime specified so that you'll be okay so as with all the phobic phobic disorders those suffering from social anxiety often will attempt to avoid the source of the anxiety. That's, that's standard. In the case of social anxiety, this is particularly problematic, is very problematic, and in severe cases can lead to complete social isolation. That was what I was talking about. So, you know, those individuals that have got that problem that is overwhelming, that is clinical, that is a syndrome that is eating them up, that is something very critical. And, you know, it gets over and way out of order. They can handle it. They tend to avoid that particular thing that causes anxiety. So if it's about going out to have that sort of fear, meeting people out there or even passing by when you are, they are going to the town center and meeting people here and there and even social interaction or going out to speak and all that. If they really know that it's a problem that is really overwhelming, then they wouldn't even dare do that. So in case, in, in, in that kind of situation, in order for them to be okay in themselves and have their confidence kicked back, they will avoid it. They wouldn't even go to town. They wouldn't even go to the town center. They wouldn't even be bothered when they are invited to go and speak. Maybe they've got that talent, but because of that situation, that social anxiety disorder that is really sort of, you know, hitting them down, knocking their confidence, making sure that they can't do anything, they wouldn't even dare try to go out there and do anything. So they stop going out entirely. They will become isolated. They lock themselves down. Like this critical situation that we are in at the moment. If there is a social anxiety disorder in this era, in this um, state of condition that we are all in, global condition that we are all in at the moment, and that person has got that clinical social anxiety disorder, they wouldn't, they will lock themselves up, even if the lockdown is eased, or even if the, they say that we are easing the lockdown, or we are lifting the lockdown, they wouldn't even then go out, because they've got that disorder. 
that is making them very, very uncomfortable. So here we are. They will avoid anything that is going to act as antecedent, that is going to act as a, a trigger factor for the anxiety to erupt or to surge. They wouldn't do it. They will avoid it. So most of the time, these individuals isolate themselves. Sometimes in close, you know, places. They don't want to come close to where people are. And this is a sort of sort of serious um, syndromes that are sort of claiming lives. And to the extent of sometimes when you go through that stage, you become depressed. And you know, depression, you are heading to that suicidal sort of um, situation and it's very serious so if, if you take this and it's a, it's, a, it's a clinical situation and you don't deal with it it's going to end up it's going to escalate into so many quarters that will be very very devastating for that individual let's carry on with that let's talk about obsessive compulsive disorder which is OCD and I think each of uh, you out there have just a little bit about that because some of that some of us don't like debt in our you know in our surroundings in our environment we don't like that so as an individual and you don't like that what do you do you clean after yourself all the time or you clean after your kids or you clean after your wife you clean after your husband you clean after your family you clean after your grandfather your mother you know you, you you tidy up the place so that at least you feel good in yourself that after all you are not living in a dirty environment so obsessive compulsive disorder which is OCD is a type of anxiety disorder primarily characterized by repetitive obsessions i.e. distressing persistent and intrusive thoughts or images so apart from the cleaning side that I was talking about they are distressing which is very worrying hunting you down persistent ongoing over and over again it doesn't stop it lingers for a period of time it's intrusive intrusive thoughts or images it comes in whether you like it or not it's uncontrollable you can't control it there are deep thoughts that keep pushing and coming in and illuminating in your membrane in your in your in your brain so it's pushy it's intrusive it's invasive and you can't sort of manage it so when it comes like that you need to act on it so obsessive compulsive disorder is one another dangerous element of the anxiety disorders so you see once it's distressing and it's making you feel very uncomfortable disorientated persistent it lingers on over and over again it is continuous it doesn't stop and it's intrusive and it's really giving you a hard time to even think about anything else so if you've got that clinical sort of diagnosis or is yet to be diagnosed and it's harrowing and it's persistent and it's distressing and it's intrusive, then it means you need some support. Book an appointment with your GP if you are not already on any referral list. Please get it checked out by a psychologist and a psychiatrist. Because you need this thing to be clamped down before it escalates into a different thing that will destroy your life. Please have it checked out if you are going through this. And compulsions edges to perform specific acts and rituals. So you see, it pushes you, it compels you, it it sort of controls you right to perform to act in a specific way 
and rituals. So that is that is what is happening right away as we are speaking. It is very uncomfortable. Let's see what happens next. <laughs> 